Two identical balls suspended. Two identical 15 kg balls, each 25 cm in diameter, are suspended by two 35 cm wires, as you can see in the figure. The entire apparatus is supported by a single 18 cm wire and the surfaces of the balls are perfectly smooth. And as you can see in the figure, the balls are touching each other. Part A, find the tension in each of the three wires, this one, this one, and this one. Part B, how hard does each ball push on the other one? So that's the contact force between the balls. Okay, so let's start with part A. Uh, to find the tension on each wire, what I'm going to do is I will start with a free body diagram for the left ball. <clears throat> now, as you can see on the left ball, there is going to be gravitational force which is pulling it down. There will be a tension on this wire, the 35 centimeter wire, and there will be a contact force due to the ball on the right. So, uh, modeling this ball as a single particle here, I have to note the forces, uh, mass of the ball multiplied by gravitational acceleration is the weight, the tension in the wire, uh, that's the tension I will call T1, and as you can see I have labeled this angle with respect to the vertical axis alpha, therefore this tension will make an angle alpha with respect to the vertical axis and there is the contact force which is pointing horizontally to the left okay and if i set up my coordinate system here this is my y-axis this is my x-axis the net uh, and I, I should also note that the diameter is uh, 25 centimeter therefore the radius of the balls are 12.5 centimeter each. Okay, <clears throat> the net force on the y-axis must be equal to zero because we have an equilibrium situation. Uh, and as you can see, if I take the component of tension T1 on the vertical axis, it will be T1 cosine alpha. So T1 cosine alpha should be balancing the weight of the ball, mass of the ball times gravitational acceleration, g. And uh, from this triangle here, I can read uh, basically sine alpha, so it's going to be r divided by r plus uh, 35. So from this triangle, I read sine alpha to be r divided by 35 plus r and that will be equal to 12.5 divided by uh, 47.5 that's sine alpha and how do I calculate cosine alpha cosine alpha is square root 1 minus sine square alpha and if I substitute that here uh, cosine alpha is square root 1 minus parentheses 12.5 over 47.5 square okay so uh, the tension in this wire T1 will be the weight of the ball mass of the ball times gravitational acceleration g divided by cosine alpha and this is uh, because it's a 15 kilogram ball uh, the weight will be 15 times 9.8 meters per second square and as for cosine alpha, alpha I have square root of 1 minus parentheses 12.5 over 47.5 square and if you calculate this, the answer up to three significant figures is 152 
Newtons. All right. Now um, I have labeled this uh, joint point J and I want to draw a free body diagram for this massless point J in order to find the other tension, the tension in the upper wire. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram for the massless point, point J. <clears throat> now, if I look at this point, there will be two tensions pointing down, T1 and T1, because these are identical, this should be the same tension, and there will be a T2 pointing up towards the ceiling. So, I can put here um, the two tensions pointing down and the tension pointing up. So this I call T2. These two will make an angle alpha with respect to the vertical axis. This is T1 and this must be T1 because we have a symmetric situation. And once again I set up my coordinate axis y-axis, vertical axis, x-axis, horizontal, the net force on the y-axis must be equal to zero because I have an equilibrium situation. So T2 must be equal to 2 times T1 cosine alpha. So this is 2 times T1. T1 was the weight of the one of the balls divided by cosine alpha multiplied by cosine alpha. The cosine alphas will cancel, so it will be twice the weight of a ball. So 2 mass of the ball times gravitational acceleration, 2 times 15 times 9.8. And uh, this turns out to be uh, T2, if you calculate this, is 294 Newtons. All right, so let's move on to part B. Uh, we know uh, the, from the free body diagram of the left ball that there is a contact force here, and that's basically the question in part B. What is this contact force? So if I go back to the free body diagram for the left ball and write the equilibrium condition uh, on the x-axis, um, the net force on the x-axis should be zero, uh, which means that this contact force uh, is balanced by the component of T1 on the x-axis, uh, which is T1 sine alpha, okay? So this will be equal to T1 sine alpha, which is the uh, weight of the ball, mass of the ball times gravitational acceleration g, divided by cosine alpha was the tension, so it's now sine alpha over cosine alpha. So basically the contact force is the weight of the ball times tangent alpha. And 15 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second square. Uh, the tangent alpha is uh, sine alpha over cosine alpha. So sine alpha 12.5 divided by 47.5 multiplied with 1 over cosine alpha square root of 1 minus 12.5 over 47.5 square and if you calculate this with three significant figures we obtain 40.0 Newtons for the contact force. So that's how hard these balls push each other. 
Okay, now to summarize, we have two identical balls that are suspended by two equal length wires, 35 centimeter wires, and we have the whole apparatus supported by an 18 centimeter upper wire. The, perfect, the balls are perfectly smooth, so we have a nice touch in between the balls, and we want to know the tension in each wire and the contact force between the two balls. It's an equilibrium problem. So first of all, from the geometry, I can determine cosine and sine of this angle alpha. Uh, as you can see, sine alpha is r over r plus 35 and cosine alpha is square root 1 minus sine square alpha. And that r is uh, the diameter divided by 2. So if I write the equilibrium on the y-axis, which gives me the component of T1 onto the y-axis, T1 cosine alpha, pointing in j-hat direction, mass of the ball times gravitational acceleration g, the weight pulling down, so it's acting in minus j-hat direction, the net force on the y-axis equals to zero. By noting the cosine alpha I calculate using this geometry, this triangle here, I find tension T1 to be mass of the ball gravitational acceleration g divided by cosine alpha 152 newtons. If I write the uh, net force on the x-axis equals zero for this free body diagram, then it's T1 sine alpha that is balanced by the contact force, that's what I did in part b, and uh, it's going to be the weight of the ball times tangent alpha, and that turns out to be 40 newtons. In order to find the tension in the upper wire, I have to concentrate on this uh, point J, the massless point J, uh, which feels the two equal tensions because of the symmetric situation. We have the same tension T1 here, but T2 is pulling it up, and these both make angle alpha with respect to the vertical axis because this is an isosceles triangle here and um, therefore we see that t2 must be balancing 2t1 cosine alpha so when we substitute uh, our result for t1 weight of the ball divided by cosine alpha we obtain twice the weight of the ball for t2 which is 294 newtons